Um, so I, I just started with with the with the idea um, that um, what we are seeing in, in the digital currency world is kind of a fear of having a Sputnik moment like it happened in 1957 when um, the then Soviet Union launched this satellite and, and, and the United States feared that they may uh, fell uh, left behind in technological and also military terms. Um, so I think in the digital world, we are not there yet. We don't uh, see really actual the, the, the Sputnik moment but we are getting nearer, and I think there are two to three candidates uh, provoking uh, this um, Sputnik feeling, uh, which could trigger um, the, the broad development of, of digital uh, central bank currencies. And this is uh, certainly the, the Libra. I think uh, the Libra is, is very important. Um, yeah, and, uh, ah, great. We can go to, to slide three. Um, so, so the Libra, I think, uh, is, is one um, point where, where people fear, okay, this could take over uh, the monetary system. It could be also the Chinese central bank digital currency um, uh, coming out of the pilot phase uh, where it is right now. And obviously, there's also a hot debate about um, if Bitcoin eventually might take over the role as um, the world currency. Uh, so the question is, is uh, this fear justified? Is it realistic that, that Libra or China would start to dominate uh, the world currency system uh, with issuing a digital currency, um, thereby having a first mover advantage um, with the ECB or the Fed? Um, so this is certainly one, one important question, and I would, uh, will address it uh, during this talk. Um, the agenda I have prepared for today, which is the next slide. Um, so the first point, how advanced central banks are with respect to the development of, of CBDC. And Marion has already touched on, on this issue and also what the motives behind uh, developing and, and doing research uh, on CBDC. Um, then, uh, more technically, and, and taking a little bit a step back, what is CBDC? And here I will concentrate on a general purpose a CBDC and a focus in addition, or not in addition, but complementary to that, on account-based and cryptographic-based uh, CBDC. Um, then, uh, which is the third point, uh, I think it's important to understand why there is quite a lot of opposition uh, in parts of the financial sector to a central bank digital currency. Um, fourth point is about the very important design question. Uh, so what are the difference between account-based and cryptographic-based CBDC? What are the main advantages and disadvantages? And finally, I will come back to the question, is there a need for a digital uh, euro? And I will wrap up how such a digital euro should look like. So. Let's start uh, with a question about how advanced central banks are, which is uh, shown in the next slide. Um, so we know this is from the survey of the, of the Bank of International Settlement. Um, and we know from that that rather sooner than later, um, a couple of central banks might issue CBDC, uh, as Marin has already shown. Um, so around 20%. Uh, think that they will very likely uh, launch CBDC in one to six years. Now, the, the reasons for doing so and for doing research um, so uh, in, in this area, they are quite numerous. And uh, this comes also from a survey from the, from the BIS, from the Bank of International Settlement, which is the next slide. Um, and um, Stefan, yeah, right, thanks. Um, so. And what is quite interesting here is that it's the third part, it's that financial inclusion um, is very much high on the agenda of um, developing countries. While in advanced economies is not very much um, or not considered to be a big uh, problem, uh, payment efficiency um, is even more important uh, for emerging markets. Um, and what is not included here in this survey is the point of monetary sovereignty, um, which could be a subject for countries uh, where um, 
they fear to lose completely control um, of the payment system, especially in countries where cash uh, use is dwindling, like, like it is in Sweden. Um, the idea of reducing infections of an, uh, epi uh, of an uh, epidemic um, was not included, obviously, because this survey was done last year. Um, so before diving deeper, um, let's sketch up and take a step back what central bank uh, digital currency is in comparison to other forms of money. Um, I think for this question, um, the by now already classical money flower, uh, which is designed by Bank of International Settlement, is rather useful. Um, so to explain it shortly, um, four criteria are here defined in the form of, of questions. So the first question is, is the, the currency widely accessible? And if it is uh, indeed the case, then the currency um, which uh, complies with this characteristic is included in the red ellipse. And if it is not, it is outside the red ellipse. Uh, is it digital? Is the other question, is it token based? And most importantly, is it issued, issued by a central bank? And now, if it is issued by a central bank and, and it is digital, then obviously it is CBDC, it is central bank digital currency. Now, in addition to this, which is shown in the next slide, um, it is very useful to differentiate between a centralized and a distributed CBDC infrastructure, and as well to differentiate between an account-based or a token-based currency. So under the condition that it's the central bank which guarantees the value of the money. So otherwise we would not, not talk about CBDC. We would not talk about central bank digital currency. So under this condition, um, the first question, question is who writes the transactions into the ledger? And if it's a central validator who's doing this, then we have a centralized approach. If it is in, uh, instead a task that is delegated by the central bank to validators, then we would talk about a permissioned network of validators and it's a um, distributed approach. So the other question um, is more technological. Is it account-based or token-based? And um, well, the account-based approach is very similar or very not very abstract because it is very similar to your account at a bank, um, only that you have now direct access to central bank currency. Um, so what the bank central bank needs in this case to do a transaction is your identity, the identity of the person um, or of the legal entity of the account to make this transaction. Um, by contrast, uh, in a token-based CBDC, um, a, um, a transaction can only be fulfilled if the user demonstrates knowledge of an encrypted value. So before going more into detail with respect to the advantages and disadvantages of account-based versus token-based, let's elaborate first uh, why there is among bankers and some central bankers too uh, quite a lot of opposition to CBDC. Um, and I have here two quotations. The one is from the Saving Group Association of Germany in, in, Germ uh, in February 2020, and they say, the creation of digital central bank currency must not put in danger the intermediation function of the banking sector. So they fear that we will have, or that they will, will lose business. Um, through CBDC, as the CBDC uh, takes over some payment functions. Uh, Jens Weidmann, the president of the Bundesbank, he um, said in January 2019, the biggest threat in terms of financial stability is the possibility of a digital bank run. So what does it mean? Uh, a bank run is, is happening when the people withdraw their money all at the same time from the banking sector. Um, in today's world, they would put it in cash 
um, but in a world with digital currency, with central bank digital currency, they would switch it to CBDC. Now, as you can do it by a mouse click, um, Weidmann obviously fears that this could be done if there is trouble in the banking sector. Um, interestingly enough, there is a, um, a way you can easily avoid this problem, and it's a proposal from the ECB itself, um, from Ulrich Bindseil, who is head of payments at the ECB, and he proposes a system where a certain amount of money on your central bank current account, so your CBDC account, uh, or it could also be a, a CDB token um, ledger, um, is not charged by any fees. So up to, let's say, for example, up to 10,000 euro, you can have it there at, uh, on, the, on your CBDC as CBDC without that any charge uh, is, is burdened on it. Um, so this money would be considered as a kind of transaction cash. And at the time you want to hold more than these 10,000 euro, you would have to pay some fee, or you can also say, alternatively, the central bank would get interest rate payments on the money um, that you are depositing with the central bank. Uh, so basically, these would be negative interest rates. Thus, it is not very attractive to deposit too much money with the central bank. Um, and in a time of crisis where people um, feel that there is stress in the banking sector and are about to flee the banking sector, um, the central bank could easily increase the fee on CBDC um, to, let's say, 50%. And people would obviously think twice before depositing their money with the central bank because they would lose money. Um, thus, I would say that the risk of a bank run, which uh, many pointed point so much out, is not a good argument against a digital euro. Um, this does not mean that bank runs cannot occur anymore, but they are not more risky than they are right now. Um, so now let's move to, to, to the design question. Account-based or token-based, centralized or distributed? Um, and I go step by step, I go with a, um, about the issue of implementation. So I think the main advantage of an account-based CBDC infrastructure would be that implementation could be done rather fast and without too much technologi technological challenges. Because in today's world, CBDC accounts exist for banks, they exist also for some persons and for uh, some public entities. So what the central bank has to do is only to extend the infrastructure to all people and to all legal entities which apply for. Now, if the central bank, that is now the question, will the central bank do it all by itself? Then they would have a, a very big volume of payment traffic and uh, which they would have to handle. And this would certainly require massive technological investments. Um, it is feasible, but it would require some time and some money to do so. So the other cheaper way and probably also faster alternative is to delegate the administration of individual central bank accounts to uh, private banks. A token-based CBDC um, would require a, a blockchain to be established. Uh, well, for the central bank, this is new infrastructure, and the central bank does not have a real-world um, experience on that, and this implicates, obviously, natural, naturally more risk. Now, the point scalability, uh, very important in the, in the payment system. Um, I think account base should not encounter uh, really uh, big scalability problems. Um, and this is um, irrespectively of the question if it is a distributed uh, account-based system or a centrally organized uh, system. Um, now, if you take the token-based system and you want at the same time a distributed ledger, then scalability could become a problem, um, at least with the technological stand where we are today. 
So this would be, I think, um, a problem for organizing CBDC by a distributed ledger. Then there is the issue of anonym anonymity. Um, and an account-based system, anonymity is not given by default. Um, each account has an identity. Um, in a token-based system, especially a distributed token-based system, some kind um, of anonymity seems to be possible. There is also a paper from the ECB where um, they propose anonymity fouches, uh, which allow the user of CBDC to make payments up to a certain amount with these fouches, uh, which are um, where, where on, which are not going through the usual channel of um, anti-money laundering and uh, criminal ter terroristic finance um, compliance. So up to a certain amount, you can do that. And if, if there are, the amounts are higher than the usual um, compliance and, and, and uh, monitoring would take place. But at the end of the day, it's, it's not really um, anonymous. Uh, it, 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 it's still not satisfying someone who wants really have the same substitute as cash. Um, then there is the point of, of cross-border payments, uh, which, which could prove, I think, a very competitive factor or very important factor in competing with other, with other um, digital currencies. Um, in an account-based system, such cross-border transactions could be done, but they would be as, well, complicated and expensive, um, similar to what they are today. Um, by contrast, um, with a token-based system, um, se seamless and inexpensive cross-border payments should be possible. Um, however, for such a vision to be, to be realized, um, the international token-based systems should have or should be coordinated um, to incorporate uh, interlinkage options into the token-based approach. And, and here is the point where, where I see uh, Libra to enjoy a big comparative advantage. Um, because Libra, uh, which wants to establish Libra in, in, in different currency areas, um, has right from the start um, the same blockchain system for each jurisdiction. So uh, this is certainly a, a big uh, advantage. Um, while countries, they have to coordinate. Um, and this is, uh, has always been difficult, but uh, in the today's world, um, or let's say it has been also difficult in pre-Trump times, but in today's world, it's, it's even more difficult to do so. Um, what about China in this context? Um, China could also gain some advantage in this area. Um, if it, for example, requires from its uh, trading partners to establish the same standard of CBDC to enable cross-border payments. Uh, this is, well, I would say it's rather pressure and not so much coordination. Um, well, having said that, um, especially in a token-based CBDC system, there is a lot of room for, for uh, financial innovation which could make a different token-based system. So even if they are not standardized, standardized, um, they could make these token-based systems internationally interoperable to compete with Libra. So I think that um, financial innovation could help here. Well, then um, there is the next point, um, and it's at least as decisive, uh, this difference, um, no, it's, it's still um, the slide before, um, even if the time might be running out. <laughs> but um, So it's, it's the point um, of money being programmable. Um, and account-based money is not programmable, but um, the, the token-based money is. And um, perhaps this is the main reason. Uh, why ECB should uh, start more aggressively to launch uh, such CBDC because uh, programmable money, um, this could be used for smart contracts and, and will be used in an economy, in a machine economy where um, IoT, Internet of Things devices are, uh, will play an increasing role 
um, both in production and in consumption. Uh, so this might be become a competitive edge. Um, and so I think that uh, ECB should not only react to the developments which are outside, but also actively uh, go ahead. So let's wrap up. Um, so is there a need for a digital euro and, and how should it be designed? Uh, so the, the, the answer to uh, the question, is there a need of a digital or euro, um, is clearly yes. I think there is a need um, because the alternative is that, that, for example, private platform companies might take over uh, the global payment system uh, and therefore take also advantage of the data which are incorporated uh, in payments. Uh, and irrespectively of the viewpoint, if these data need protection or not, I think they need protection, but irrespectively of, of such a, a view, the data's, data are valuable. Um, and it does not look reasonable uh, to leave these data and also the profits uh, connected to them um, to private firms if sovereigns are able to get hold of these data and pro to protect their, their people and the data of the people. Is in this context the Chinese um, CBDC a threat to our monetary system? Um, perhaps, yes, uh, the country could try to use its economic power uh, to require companies which are doing business with China to use uh, the Chinese CBDC standard, which would imply that, that uh, related payments would go through this system. Um, in this case, um, you have again a data issue um, and also the issue of giving China, China some power in the form of control of the international payment system. Um, well, similar to the power uh, the US has today uh, through the international settlement system um, SWIFT. So what is the optimal design? Um, here you can see the, the different um, alternatives um, which I have described and I, I have now take, taken out four criteria. Scalability, um, is it programmable? What about anonymity and cross-border payments? Is it possible and, and how cheap or how expensive? And the conclusion of, of all the systems that exist and, and, and that could be possible, in my view, is that um, a central token-based, centralized token-based CBDC is indeed, at the, for the time being right now, is the best option and, and uh, that the ECB should go ahead with it because it is scalable, it is programmable, anonymity could be generated partly and cross-border payments could be done quite easily. And so this would be all the four factors which, which, which would make um, this very competitive. Um, yeah, that's uh, actually from my side. Uh, thank you very much. And I would um, be happy to um, receive questions and discuss some issues.